Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over the relationship between potential energy and work. And specifically, we're going to be talking about gravitational potential energy and work. And before we talk about gravitational potential energy and work, I just want to remind you that earlier we talked about kinetic energy and work. And we have this thing we call the work energy theorem or the work energy principle. And that states that the net work done on an object is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Well, we have something similar to that for gravitational potential energy, but it's not the network, it's the work done by an external force is equal to the change in gravitational potential energy. So this is work, but it's the work done by an external force. And that work is equal to, or the work done on an object by an external force is equal to the change in the gravitational potential energy of the object. And I'm going to try and show you how those two quantities, the work done by the external force and the change in gravitational potential energy are equal to each other in this video right now. Now, you will remember for work, we use the work equation, which is that the force times the distance is equal to the cosine of theta. So the force is the external force, the distance is the distance over which the external force is applied, and the cosine of theta, theta is the angle between the external force and the displacement. It's the angle between those two vectors, okay? And that is going to be equal to, as we showed in a previous example, our equation for the change in gravitational potential energy, which is mg delta y, the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in the y position of the object or the change in the height. I'm using change in y in this case. Okay, so once again, I'm going to show you that these two values are equivalent to each other. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply force over distance to raise this object up. And when we do that, we have to apply an external force. And most commonly, we call that the applied force. When you apply force, when you simply take an object and lift it up or you have a string and you lift it up, or you have a crane and the crane lifts something up. But basically you're taking on a force and you're applying an external force over distance to raise an object up. That force in our work equation is equal to the external force, okay, or the applied force. Now, how big is the applied force or what is the applied force? Well, the applied force, when you lift something up at a constant velocity, no acceleration, the forces have to be balanced, and the other force that's acting on the object is the gravitational force. If the forces are balanced, then the applied force, when you lift something up at a constant velocity, is equal to the gravitational force or the weight of the object. And we can calculate the weight of the object by taking the mass of the object and multiplying it times the acceleration due to gravity. So in our work equation, this force is equal to our applied force, our applied force is equal to the gravitational force, and the gravitational force is equal to mg, the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So I'm going to substitute in our work equation, I'm going to substitute mg in for f. So I'm going to write down mg. That's the first thing. Now, what about the distance? The distance is the distance over which this external force is applied. And that distance I'm calling delta y. We could call it delta h, you could just call it d, but I like to call it delta y, it's a little more specific, so I know that it's in the positive value. But in this case, the distance is delta y, so I'm just going to substitute delta y for the d, for the distance. Now, what about the cosine of theta? Well, theta is the angle between the displacement vector and our applied force vector. And you can see that these two lines, these two vectors, are parallel to each other and they're pointing in the same direction. That means when you have two vectors that are parallel to each other and pointing in the same direction, the angle between those two vectors, theta, is zero degrees. So this is the cosine of zero degrees. And the cosine of zero degrees is plus one. Okay, so all we have here is F is our mg. We substituted mg in for F. We substituted delta y in for d. And we have cosine of theta, which theta is zero degrees, and the cosine of zero degrees is one, so it just be times one. Of course, we don't really write down the times one. 
So we've converted our work equation from FD cosine theta into mg delta y. And lo and behold, on the other side, we already have mg delta y. So you can see now that the work is equal to, the work done by an external force is equal to the change in gravitational potential energy. So that means when you do work on an object with an external force raising it or lowering it, then you do a certain amount of work and that work is equal to the change in gravitational potential energy. If you change an object's gravitational potential energy, then the amount of change in the gravitational potential energy is equal to the work done by the external force. Okay, work done by an external force is equal to the change in gravitational potential energy. The change in gravitational potential energy is equal to the work done by an external force. Okay, so that is the relationship between gravitational potential energy and the work done by an external force. Okay, I hope you found the video helpful. If you found that video helpful, it would be great if you could give me a nice positive comment in the comment section below, or a thumbs up, or both. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.